Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the ENSO update for April 2021. So here we are, it's the uh, end of another month, it's time to bring you our latest ENSO update. So we're going to go through the latest in terms of sea surface temperature anomalies in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Bring up to date how things are uh, developing in the equatorial Pacific. Uh, we'll have a look at the subsurface temperature anomalies. We'll have a look at the sun oscillation index. And of course, we will have a look at uh, some model data as well and see what more the forecast happen with ENSO through the rest of the year. Will we, will we go back to La Nina? Will we uh, see an El Nino taking off? Uh, we'll have a look at all of the data uh, very shortly. I should go on back to you in a second. Just say that the first video released today was our nice little 7 a.m. upload. And uh, we've got a 10 to 14 day and the European outlook coming up later on today. So it's going to be a busy old day at Gazworth. It's uh, today. Uh, no written version for this ENSO update. The reason being that uh, the website is going to be mothball from tomorrow, Friday the 30th of April. So there's very little point placing this video on the ENSO uh, updates page at Gaz, where it isn't providing a written summary just to 24 hours. So uh, the ENSO update, along with all of the other updates, all of our other updates, are going to be on YouTube uh, from now on. I have created a playlist for this year's ENSO update. So, uh, update, so January. January, February, March, and now April's end so update um, is uh, is available on YouTube uh, in a playlist to help you, uh, you know, uh, navigate your way uh, through these uh, monthly updates. So um, check out the playlist uh, tab, uh, you know, on the Gaz of YouTube homepage, and you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to see the uh, playlist for uh, the 2021 end so updates. Right, so uh, let's begin then. Uh, this month's ENSO update. We're going to start off by having a look at cold and warm episodes by season chart from CPC, NCB, and NOAA, as always. So here we go then. This is depicting all uh, ENSO events via tri monthly periods all the way back to uh, 1950. So uh, the blue coloured uh, numbers, of course, are where we've got uh, La Nina's going on. They're cold events. The uh, red coloured numbers are where we've got El Nino events going on. And, of course, they are warm events. The all-important number is half a degree, uh, 0.5, either above or below. Above average for El Nino, below average for uh, La Nina, of course. So we see we had a prolonged, uh, a prolonged La Nina from 1954 all the way to uh, 1956, uh, starting in the summer of 1954 and not ending until uh, like late summer, early autumn of uh, 1956. Conversely, though, uh, in 1957, 1958, have a uh, El Nino going on. That's those red coloured numbers just there. Right, let's come down to the bottom of the chart then and have a look at the latest. So um, this is 2020 just here. This is 2021 just there. We can see that, of course, we have had a La Nina uh, over the past few months. Winter 2020-2021 was a week. Uh, to borderline moderate uh, La Nina winter. You can see that from these blue coloured numbers uh, just here. The latest number that we have within the box is still within La Nina threshold for uh, January, February, March. Time up period at zero, uh, at minus 0 0.9 degrees. So just a shy of one degree colder than average still for that tri-monthly period. I would expect this to revert back to uh to uh, like 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.3 over these trying periods and of course when that happens that will bring an end to uh the landing year but certainly certainly this is you know uh there's no question about it this has been a landing year starting in uh the trying period of uh july august september of 2020 and still going on in the tri-monthly period of january february and march i would expect either that number just there or that number ju just there to go back to black, and we will go back to Enso neutral, and then we will wait to see where we go through uh, the remainder of the uh, year. Then, uh, of course. So this is how sea surface temperature anomalies were looking in the actual Pacific Ocean. We did uh, last month's ENSO update. So, uh, of course, we uh, this is the actual Pacific Ocean just here. So uh, the, uh, El the El Nino and La Nina events are like cyclical warming and cooling of the uh, upper Pacific Ocean, essentially. So it's basically the Earth's thermostat, you know, turning up for El Nino and pumping out heat, turning down for La Nina and, uh, and cooling things down. And these events, whilst they start in the 
Equatorial Pacific Ocean. They do have wider impacts for the overall ocean circulation. Uh, you know, you notice how like the northeastern Pacific Ocean has become quite cold uh, there back in uh, back in March, and uh, and so on. So so these events, you know, they do have a wider impact on on both the uh, uh, both the ocean circulations and also the uh, the. Um, the, the general weather circulation. Right, so uh, this is how uh, La Nina was looking last month. So we still have the signature of La Nina uh, when we did last month's ENSO update. That's on the 29th of March. She's blue colours here from Peru to Indonesia. Uh, is the signature of La Nina stretching out across the equatorial uh, Pacific Ocean. The latest looks like that. So you see we have very much had a week ago past month of the La Nina signature. We see that uh, we see that we have gone back to Enso neutral. Still more or less on the slightly cold and average side. Uh, we see so the temperature runs across most parts of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, but only very, very, very slightly. And most places are actually sort of around uh, the uh, Enso neutral uh, type mark, uh, but slightly on the cooler side. But definitely, definitely, there's been like a weakening, of course, over the uh, past month from from how things looked in March or 29th March. How things look on the 27th of April has definitely been a weakening of the uh, landing. We have gone back to Enso uh, neutral conditions in the uh, in terms of the sea surface temperature. Anomalies in the actual Pacific Ocean. Subsurface temperature wise, this is how things look. So, with this, you have to think that we've got Peru just there, we've got Indonesia uh, over here. So, these are the depths of the ocean, uh, of course, going all the way down to 300 meters, very deep ocean. Uh, this is from the uh, CPC NCEP NOAA uh, PDF, uh, by the way. Well, it's great to have uh, a look at this. And by the way, the links to these websites, of course, no longer available at galsworthys.com, but they can be found uh, within the links channel on our Discord server. So uh, these uh, websites are still accessible uh, via the uh, Gavs Weather this Discord. You can find me at the link, invitation link to the Gavs Weather Discord uh, within the description with the videos. Right, so you see, again, uh, just underneath the surface, so this is kind of like the surface just here, down to, like, just under the surface, just there. And you can see that generally the landing signature, signature has faded now uh, on the surface and just underneath the surface, except for there. So a little bit cold and average through there. But overall, both cold and average sea and subsurface temperature anomalies have gone. We've got warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies here in the western part of the, uh, of the subsurface uh, of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. For around 50 to 200 uh, metres, generally we've got warmer than average subsurface temperature anomalies there. Less so, and that's in the western part of the actual Pacific Ocean, less of that as we go through the central and eastern part of the actual Pacific Ocean. I don't think there's any particular sign of uh, of El Nino there. There's no particular sign of La Nina either. It looks very much uh, to me like that it is classic Enso neutral. Uh, of course, if this does start to get more intense, if the, if the uh, subsurface temperature is to get warmer and begin to spread out and push up, uh, then we may be able to start thinking about uh, an El Nino getting going. But at the moment, I don't think that is a strong enough signature uh, to be able to say that, uh, that an El Nino or indeed a La Nina is on its way. It just looks classic and so neutral that to me. This is how the Southern Oscillation Index is looking. Now, the SY, of course, is just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It's measuring air pressures between Darwin and Tahiti. So when the SY is in positive phase, the atmospheric setup will be reflective of La Nina. When the SY is in negative phase, the atmospheric setup will be reflective of El Nino. Uh, so this is from uh, this is from Queensland government, of course, part of Bureau of Meteorology. So these are our dates and column uh, charts just here. So uh, dates, uh, let's highlight it. Dates uh, column is just there. That's the uh, column for the air pressure for Tahiti. That's the column for the air pressure for Darwin. And then this is the overall SOI number just here. These are pre preliminary, but they don't tend to change all that much. Uh, so, at the moment, we're trading negativity and positivity of the uh, SOI route. So, if we go back to the middle of April, uh, we can see that on the 12th of April, we're at minus 9. On the 13th of April, we're at minus 25. On the 14th of April, we're at minus 19. Uh, 15th of April, we're at minus 4. Those numbers are an atmospheric state that is reflective of El Nino. 
few days later on, we go into an atmospheric state really strongly reflective of La Nina. So 19th of April, we're at plus 12. 20th of April, we're at plus 21. 21st of April, we're at plus 8. Uh, 22nd of April, we're at plus 7. 23rd of April, we're at plus 12. Strongly uh, reflective of, uh, of La Nina with the atmospheric state there. Uh, we go negative for a couple of days uh, again at, uh, at uh, on the 24th at minus 1 and 25th at minus 13. And then we go positive again, 26th, 27th and latest uh, date, 28th April, all posting positive numbers at plus 4, plus 5 and plus 10 respectively. So trading negativity and positive, uh, positivity of the air. So I probably, if anything, a little bit more towards the positive side, but... Uh, but you know, we, we're trading negativity and positivity, which tells us really that we're so in terms of the abstract state as well as uh, the, uh, uh, in the oceanic state as well. So everything at the moment is still pointing towards so neutral. There's no sign of us leaving so neutral at this point, and we're exactly where we expect to be in the middle of the spring, uh, back after landing, you're back to enter neutral and waiting to see where we go next. So let's see what the models are forecasting with CFS uh, V2. Now this is keeping us at ENSO neutral for the rest of the year. So we've got our temperature anomalies on the side, dates on the Remember, all important number is 0 0.5, above average for El Nino, below average for La Nina. Where we are right now, as of April, is just there around ENSO neutral on the solid cold side of ENSO neutral, the black dash line which is the ensemble mean, is keeping us at ENSO neutral on the cold side of ENSO neutral, but at, on the uh, at ENSO neutral on the cold side, you know, right way through the rest of the year and, and to the end of the year. We get as far as January 2022 uh, with this. So on the cold side of ENSO neutral is, uh, is, where, is where CFS is predicting us to be for the rest of the year, basically not changing from uh, where, where we currently are. This is how CANSIPS is looking uh, for June in terms of the sea surface temperature noise. It's tropicaltidbits.com, of course. So just very sort of uh, much uh, ain't so neutral again uh, for June. Let's run through and uh, see what happens as we go into uh, the late summer. Again, we remain at ain't so neutral. There's a little bit of a warmer than average signature occurring there towards uh, Peru. Does anything come of that? Not really. And actually, as we go to the autumn, if anything, we possibly start to see uh, the landing your signature beginning to strengthen slightly, actually, through the autumn. So that's borderline sort of uh, ENSO uh, neutral on the cold side to uh, weak La Nina, I think, and uh, more of a Western-based weak La Nina as well through the, uh, through the winter 2021-2022. Very much... I think towards ENSO neutral, but possibly just making it towards uh, a La Nina with CANSIPS. Uh, right, so I'm going to get rid of that and I will show you that. So this is how the ECMWF uh, Ensemble Plume is uh, looking for the central part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Again, the temperature almost on the side of the chart, the dates are along the bottom. Uh, so where we are right now is of April again, but just there on the, uh, just there to, to there, I suppose, as the month has gone along, um, given this was generated on the 1st of April. So, so yeah, we're on the cold side of Enso Neutral uh, once again. ECM Ensemble Plume uh, keeps us more or less at Enso Neutral through into the summer, so that's July. Uh, just there, maybe on the slightly warmer than average side of Enso neutral, but not really making it to the half a degree above average threshold. And then we go further out into the late summer and into the autumn with the ensemble plume. We do have a big range, so so these ensemble members up here probably just about making it to an El Nino. Uh, these ensemble members down here going back to uh, back to La Nina. However, the broad sort of uh, thrust is in the middle of the ensemble plume. So so most of these ensemble members are clustering again around Enso neutral. So the model app is very much towards Enso neutral, I think, uh, at the moment. Maybe that's because we're up with spring predictability area and we can't see where things are going to go next. Or maybe we will just remain at Enso neutral, you know, uh, through, through the rest of this year. We'll see.
This is how the uh, UK Met Office for OC5 model is forecast to So this is uh, for uh, the time period of May, June and July. Again, NC neutral, just a slight signature of warm and average sea surface temperature anomalies there in the eastern portion of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Let's go up and have a look at uh, months three to five, see what happens. So maybe uh, maybe UK Met model is, is trying to get a bit of an El Nino going here. As we get into some, this is uh, June, July, or possibly, possibly just uh, a very weak El Nino uh, beginning to, to develop there. And um, that is for the trimic period of July, August, September, as far as we go uh, with uh, with UK Met. And again, you know, we might just about be making El Nino uh, thresholds there in the far eastern part of the equator of the But I think really the UK Met Office model also is much more uh, around ENSO neutral, uh, to be honest. Um, and finally, Beijing Crime says, we can't show you Jamstack again. I don't know whether Jamstack will ever come back or uh, or what's going on there, but but we can't show it, uh, you know, can't access it again for this month. So the last model we're looking at is Beijing Climate Center. So uh, this is how uh, Beijing Climate Center is forecasting things for, for May. Uh, basically, ain't so neutral uh, in May, uh, to be honest. We go through to September, and we do possibly see a weak El Nino signature emerging in September. So we have got these warm and average sea surface temperature anomalies just here, especially again, similar to the UK met, but a little bit stronger with it in the eastern part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. I think, again, that is probably just about making it to El Nino threshold. If you look at the colours, uh, we are getting into those orange colours, so that, that certainly goes to like one, one and a half degrees above average, I think, through there, which, again, probably just about gets us into... Uh, a genuine uh, El Nino event. And that continues uh, up to December. This is how uh, Beijing Climate Center is forecasting uh, December for sea surface temperature at So I think there is like an El Nino signature going on there. So, so out of the models, I think the Beijing Climate Center is going for an El Nino, um, albeit quite a weakish sort of El Nino, but it is, it is, it is not there to say that Beijing Climate Center is going for an El Nino. You can make it very close to it, but probably more towards uh, Enso Neutral. And the rest of the models, I think, are very much towards Enso Neutral at the moment as well. Uh, can Sips might just about get back to uh, a weak La Nina by the winter, but I think even there, uh, it's more or less Enso Neutral, really. So I think at the moment, Enso Neutral is the call, cool. um, but of course that might just be because the models can't see where we're going. Uh, you know, we're at the spring predictability barrier still, we're at Enso Neutral, where you expect to be at the spring, and they just can't yet see it, you know, can't latch on to it. So I think we need to wait another couple of months. We should have a clear idea with this by June, I would have thought, and uh, and yeah, so so we'll know, we'll know by by June uh, whether we're going to stick at Ainsley Neutral, whether uh, an El Nino or indeed a landing event could emerge or re-emerge. Remember, these updates carry on all the way through the summer, and the last one we do is in August, and then we stop them as we begin the winter updates in September. And the reason we do these uh, updates is not necessarily all that apparent right now, but this all has a very big impact on next winter, you know, in terms of the gas, where we've got winter forecast methodology. And so it always plays a big part uh, within our methodology. Um, and so, and so, yeah, we carry on looking at these once a month through the summer. But when we get to the autumn, when we get to September, you will see why ENSO is, uh, you know, why we focus on it every month. Uh, and, and it becomes quite a big player when we get into the winter update. So if you like, this is all just beginning to uh, lay the foundations for all, all the stuff that's to come later on in the year. But of course, it is interesting in its own terms, you know, to see what's going to happen uh, with ENSO. It's always, always an interesting uh, video. I hope, anyway, these ENSO updates. Right, so that's it then uh, for this uh, month's ENSO update. We're going to do it all over again next month. And uh, and we'll see whether we have any clearer signals next month or whether it is still ENSO neutral. That is the call. Please like, share, subscribe. Share it as far and wide as you can, this video. Share it on your Facebook pages. Share it on your social media pages. You know, retweet it as many times as you can. Get as many people as you can to watch. Um, and thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And, of course, subscribe to the channel. 
We'll be back later on with European Outlook and also uh, with our 10 to 14 day, which will include regular features. Uh, but for this video, this ain't so update for April 2021, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.